Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear you this morning. we got a great show lined up, a special guest here, some special video. But first, let's do our weather. Brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. Another Chamber of Commerce Day, high of 75, low of 61. And that all important water temperature is dropping 65 to 64, but it's still warm. I've gotten reports of Pompano being caught. I've got reports of uh, some Kobe being hooked. I don't know if been landed yet, but some, they've been hooked uh, at the pier. And I, I, I want the fishing report on Friday. I'm going to really give you a lowdown on details of exactly what's going on. But I have gotten some uh, uh, unofficial reports. Okay, let's take a look at our uh, river region brought to us uh, right here, brought to us by Watson's Land and Marina and Dry Store. Looking on the screen there, that place cold is leveling off. It's still at 15 foot, but the Choctahatchee at Carefield is at 10 foot. Both rivers are high. Both of them have a real sort of slow, steady drop. Now let's take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. And today is uh, Thursday, March the 10th, and we're looking again at neat tides. Today and the rest of the weekend will be just a neat tide. Next week's going to be some stronger tides, but not a lot of tidal flow. The big thing, of course, uh, is the wind. The wind, we've got small craft with vibes for most of this week. It's just it's been blowing from 15 to 25, and as the day gets on, wears on, it gets stronger and stronger wind. So be aware of that if you're out on a small boat. All right, we're going to take our break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back and welcome to our special guest, Kenny Bostick. Good morning, Kenny. Good morning, Winston. How are you? I'm doing well. Kenny and I go way back. We see yep. each other a lot on Sunday morning and talk uh, fishing and hunting and all, but uh, glad to have you on. Glad to be here. We, we had a picture. I could not find it last night. I promise you I'm going to find it this weekend or whatever. <laughs> of, of when we were very young men, when we literally had a truckload of wood ducks. We with, sure did. With Bubba Martinez, but uh, that's another day, another story. <laughs> uh, Kenny is an avid turkey hunter, and with turkey season coming on, it's a great time for them to come on. And uh, uh, Ken, tell us a little bit about yourself. Born and raised here. I met a girl 41 years ago from Illinois, and we ended up buying a farm up there about 25 years ago. Uh, it's a great place to hunt. Florida is too, but I was able to buy this farm. We have 180 acres that's out in the country. When everybody visits, us, they say, you live in rural Missouri, and we sure do. But that's what I like. I like out in the country. We have a lot of deer. We have a lot of wild turkeys. Mm -hmm. And what I do like about Missouri, Missouri does not have a lot of pressure on their turkeys. Yeah. Uh, over the last three or four years, our turkeys have really rebounded. I've found over 25 years, turkeys and deer all cycle. We've had a lot of, we've had a few rough years with our deer from the blue tongue. It's, yeah. uh, it's a little insect that lays an egg in a de deer's nostril. It goes to their brain and it kills them, and it's linked to a drought. And we've had two or three years of bad drought, mm -hmm. and I would say our deer numbers have been cut in half over the last three or four years. It's sad, but it's nature's way of mm -hmm. correcting the balance. And it, it was sort of stayed in an area, did it spread around many places? Or? It, it uh, is between Missouri, Iowa, and Illinois okay. this year. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, now your, your time frame, you're up there, what part, what time of the year do you usually go up there? We go up in April and May mm -hmm. during spring turkey. We come home in the summer to enjoy our lakes and streams. And then uh, we go back October, November for uh, deer season. Yeah, well, that's a good schedule right there. Right? You can do that when you're retired, right? I do. But yep. You work for the post office for how long? I worked for the post office for 38 years. I, I don't know if you and, uh, and I've been retired. I cannot believe it. This fall will be 10 years I've been retired. Wow. Time yep. flies. It, it does. It really <laughs> does. Well, we uh, we I, we share pictures and all. He has a tremendous. Uh, let's look at a couple of pictures. Okay. Uh, uh, this, this is really. Let's start off with this one uh, right here. I uh, take a look. At, uh, tell us about this one. This you? is a turkey my son shot this last year. We called him up and uh, just a beautiful, just a beautiful kill. It's just. Uh, I used to enjoy a lot of it by myself, but now it's it's a lot more fun when you have somebody. Preferably your son, but if not, yeah. just friends. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Great turkey. All right, tell us about this one. Now, this is a buck I shot this year with my crossbow. It's the first deer I've taken with my crossbow. And uh, I saw rubs, and I hunted this deer for seven days straight, never saw him. And then all of a sudden, I was texting a young fella coming up <laughs> to go hunting. 
And I heard something, I looked to my left and there he was and, uh, and luckily I was able to make a good shot on him and he only went about 20 yards and I saw him fall over. I, I can't, don't tell me that because if I tell my students that you were out there texting <laughs> and that big bug, I'm gonna, I, I, that's amazing. <laughs> Uh, okay, that, that's a healthy book. Yeah, right that's there. a big 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, is this another picture of it? This is, no, or this is a different book. A oh. good friend of mine, David Kelly, that's a fireman here, brought his father-in-law up, Gene Worley. Okay. Gene is retired from the uh, paper mill. And Gene has always wanted to leave Florida and go on a deer hunt. And so David oh. brought him up. And uh, Gene was 73, I think, when he shot this deer. And you'll see him in the next picture. And uh, this is David and Gene, and uh, Gene got real emotional when he walked over to the deer. Wow. It was just, uh, you, it was a great day, and uh, it just meant so much to me to be able to share it with somebody else. Well, you, you said something about, you know, what you said about getting emotional. All the true outdoors and understanding exactly what you're talking yep. about. We have this, such a deep appreciation for the game and fish that we take. We I, do. Yeah, that, that is a nice book. Gene mainly hunts down in the river swamp. Yeah. And when he walked up on this buck and he saw how wide he was, and uh, yeah. in fact, uh, he's already had him mounted and got him back, and yeah. I went over there. Uh, the fellow, uh, Gene Hammock, I think, uh, over on uh, in Millville is the one that mounted him and did a great job. Yeah, they, they do a good job over there. So uh, do you get to, uh, I know you have your, you eat this meat and all up there, and you have a good time with cooking and everything up there. Oh, we do. We yeah. have a lot of guys that come together, and yeah. uh, we share and Martha always puts on a special feed because we have our Thanksgiving up there during deer season. Oh, and I bet uh, nice. yeah, and a lot of friends come over, and Martha loves to cook. Yeah. Yep. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and show you some of the things that he uses for his turkey hunt, which is coming up this weekend. Now, we've got a youth turkey hunt coming up this weekend, so we're going to talk about that also. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So glad you're with us this morning. First thing I'm going to do is add a name to the jar. Frank Nell, you are now officially in the contest. All right. You won before, haven't you? I have. What did you win? I've won uh, a snapper, and uh, I won a little, I think, a bag, a special bag from yeah. your drawing. That's right, over yep. the years. You, you've oh, been yeah. a, a very uh, loyal viewer. We appreciate that. Turn your name in, because <laughs> you can win. That's right. Don't cost anything. <laughs> now, we're talking about youth hunting, and you brought this up. Uh, this 20 gauge gun, you're talking about a, a perfect youth gun. Uh, it is. I was looking at it before we came on the air. That is really nice. Tell us a little bit about this. This is a Mossberg Bantam 500. Uh, what's nice about it, it's got a short stock on it when they're young, but as they grow, you've got a one inch piece so uh -huh. you can then make the stock a little bit longer. I definitely believe in a red dot scope, mm -hmm. mainly so you keep your head down mm -hmm. and you follow through on your shot. But it's just a great 20 gauge. I patterned it the other day at 35 yards and it just about took the whole center of the target out. Yeah. I like to use five, number five shot. There's mm. all kind of shot out on the market, but number five shot works good in this gun, so that's what I'll be using. My grandkids are gonna start coming up starting next year. Mm -hmm. And so I went ahead and got a gun for them, but I think Grandpa or Papa is gonna go ahead and try it out <laughs> try this it. year. Make sure it works. <laughs> yeah, but I like a red dot scope, and if you ever look through one, it's got a, a center circle, oh, nice. and yep. you put it on their head, and it just gives the child something to focus on instead of just not knowing where they're gonna shoot. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. That's, that's a good youth gun, and mm -hmm. like I say, youth weekend is, is coming up. So uh, yep. now, you got a pile of beers here. Tell, tell us, just show us a couple and how you preserve yep. them and all. These are all the turkeys I've ever shot. There's 64 turkeys here, and I have kept the beers. An old man that taught me how to turkey hunt showed me how to do it, and you more or less, after you harvest the animal, you'll take the beard, you wrap twine around the very end of it and then dip it in paraffin. If you don't, mites get into the flesh and it will deteriorate the beard. As you can see, I've killed a bunch of big gobblers and I have taken my share of jakes Where over the years. Where'd that one come from? That's a one-year-old <laughs> turkey. They go from this, from their one-year-old to normally about like this from two on. Uh, it's hard to tell the age of a turkey by the beard but you definitely can by the spurs. As you can tell right here, this one is one of my longest spurred turkey mm -hmm. I ever shot. The story on this turkey was I started calling to him and he was gobbling. Took him an hour before he would, 
he was so weary, it took him an hour before he would commit to coming out into the field. He only weighed 18 pounds, and up there a turkey will weigh from 22 to 25 pounds. But I think this would have been his last year yep. because he was, he did not have, I would have mounted him, but he didn't have enough feathers. He had more skin than he had feathers. Yeah, so he was getting old. But yep. he was so weary, and he broke and went in front of me down in the field, and when I pulled my shotgun up to shoot him, I barely moved the grass, and he was, he had already caught that and he was starting to leave the field when I shot him. Wow. But a lot, some people save the spurs. I just, I like to save all the beers of all the turkeys I've shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a big one. That, now, is that the same one? Is that, uh, this is a different that, one. That's a different one. Uh-huh. But uh, a lot of your, this is, these are older turkeys, and turkeys don't get a lot of age on them before mm -hmm. predators or different things take them out. Yeah. Sometimes it's winter. They might get injured in a fight, and so, you know, longevity is not that long for a turkey. And when you get one that's got inch and five eighths, inch and a half spurs, he's three to four year old turkey. I would say, if I had to guess, probably six years would be the, the so longest a, a turkey would live. So a big buck and an a, a, a old gobbler are about the same age, really, because yep. you look at that in the wild. In know, the wild, they're yep. like that and all. Mm -hmm. Time does take a toll on them. Uh, uh, I know, and we don't have a chance to talk about your camouflage. I know you do a really good job camouflaging. I do. That, that's so important. Isn't it? it is. Uh, you know that real tree, and just so many companies yeah. now are making camouflage. That I believe in a, a mask. Uh -huh. I use a mask. Uh, I believe in gloves. I mean, I use everything because I want to enjoy the hunt. Mm -hmm. I believe in putting up blinds because you can videotape out of a blind. Yeah. Where it's especially with a young child, you can move around. Yeah. But if you don't have a, a blind or something to really camouflage them, turkeys will pick you up. That's the main thing they use is their eyesight yeah. to uh, alert them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, speaking of video, now you've been able to amazingly get some video and hunt. Uh, and so we're getting it to, ready to go. We've got a little three-minute video that Kenny has done himself. There's not a lot of talking in it. Of course, there's not a lot of talking in turkey. No, no. <laughs> it and uh, uh, sort of give us a, a preview of what we're going to look at. Okay, this turkey had been gobbling behind me for about an hour. And, uh, and you know, I've learned just take me a mug of coffee with me to the woods. Years ago, I'd have, I would never have done it. But as I've got older, I've enjoyed it. I just enjoyed the hunt more. And uh, one of the biggest thing is persistence. A lot of times you'll give up and decide maybe it'll be better over here. Well, this morning, I just this one was gobbling behind me uh, probably for an hour. And, uh, and I just stayed there drinking my coffee and I looked to my left and it startled me. He was right there at 35 yards. Well, like I saw anybody that videotapes, you're wanting to get a little bit more footage so you can enjoy it. And uh, once he broke out of a strut that I didn't think he was going to, mm -hmm. then I, I started falling apart. And <laughs> you'll see it in the video, but I ended up taking him. And, okay. uh, but just uh, the way the sun was Showing through his feathers is just a real pretty yeah, video. Yeah, that's a big turkey. It, it is. is. He weighed about 24 pounds. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to, uh, Jeff, let's roll in this video. We'll be right back after the video for our final segment.
Hi, welcome back. Sitting here with my good friend Kenny Boster, an avid outdoorsman, love turkey hunting. All before we get back to Kenny, let's look at our fishing game time today. We're looking at it brought to us by Mark Coward of County Real Estate, twelve fifty-eight to two fifty-eight this morning. But this afternoon, right after lunch, one twenty-five to three twenty-five. So check out those times and uh, take advantage of them if you can. You know, Kenny, we've known you a long time and all, and uh, you're, you're uh, such an inspiration, people. You're a cancer survivor. I am. I've, uh, I've been blessed yeah. is the way I tell everybody. I, I said, you know, all of our lives, uh, we're on a journey. Mm -hmm. And I never thought it would happen to me. I never smoked or drank. But five years ago, I got a lymph node up on the side of my throat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to Joe Perel, and he said, we need to take it out. And they did. And five years ago, uh, January, they took out that lymph node. And I found out that I had throat cancer. I decided to go to MD Anderson out in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just an amazing hospital. They're at the top of the pinnacle for research. Mm -hmm. And I went through five weeks of radiation. I was on a feeding tube for four months to stay alive because I couldn't swallow. I lost 40 pounds, but we've been blessed. I put my weight back on. Uh, and uh, anybody that uh, is in the fight it's a fight, let me tell you. There's yeah. a young fella in our, in our area, Chip Seal, yeah, oh yeah. that's uh, undergoing his, he had throat cancer, he yeah. went out there, but his has come back. Yeah. So Chip is in a fight, and if you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, put him on your prayer list. Yeah. Chip needs all the prayers that we can give him because he's, he's in yeah. a fight right now yeah, for his he's life. A, he's a fighter too. He is. All right, well anyway, proud of you. And, uh, yep. and, uh, okay, let's go to some turkey calls. Okay, uh, there's quick. There's a lot of different turkey calls out on the market. Uh, I believe you need to learn how to do a couple things, and that's yelp and cluck. Okay. All the other calls are pretty well for TV. Uh, a turkey pretty well communicates with two calls. It's just a simple cluck. This is an old box Mr. Broadnax made for me. I always start out my hunt with this call. When they gobble on the roost, you try to get as close as you can without disturbing them, and then you just give a simple cluck because that's just what a turkey does. That's all they do in the morning. And then the tends to fly down, and then from, they'll, from there they'll maybe yelp to the gobbler. Sometimes if they're real excited in the spring, they'll cackle. Mm -hmm. This is a mouth call by flex tone. Some of these fellas can yelp any call that's out there, but I can yelp a two-read call. I was down at C&G the other day where I bought this call, and I was talking to Ronnie Groom. Mm -hmm. Ronnie said he can only yelp a single reed. Mm -hmm. So everybody, and now they've got them cut up, they've got all kind of reeds out there, but I yelp a double reed call that I had learned how to yelp. Very simple yelp. Look, dry. It's all a hen does. And that's then the gobbler good. will, go if he gobbles right back, you know he's on your page. Okay. And then, but there's a lot of other type of calls. I, these are all I carry in my, my little apparatus with me. I got a, a turkey vest. But this is a slate call or a glass call. You have a, one striker that used with wood. When it's, when it's dry, but if it gets real wet or yeah. the humidity gets up, use a metal striker. Well, it's not wanting to communicate. Sometimes it works better that's than That's a others. good point, the wood and metal with the humidity. Yep. That's something we don't take about. And then this is a, a box call, a different type call. Billy White up in Alabama. Years ago, we had a... Uh, a turkey get together here in Panama City, and I ended up buying this. He came down and showed all his calls, and it's a great call. What I like about a box call, it's a little bit louder on a windy day. Okay. So you can get your you can get it out a little bit further. And that's pretty well, you know, some people cackle, some people cut. And there's all kind of calls, but the key to it is know, know where they're wanting to go if you can, get in front of them, and just make a, a simple cluck or a yelp. And if that gobbler gobbles right back to you, he know, you know he's on your page, and most of the time, just let him come. 
as you saw in that video, I was yelping to that gobbler an hour before he would commit. Mm -hmm. They're out there all day long, and we're wanting them to show up in five or ten minutes. Yeah, got to be patient. Okay. You got to be patient. Well, we're going to have to wrap up, Ken. That's a great uh, display, great show. We got it all covered, too. We got yep. it all in there. Thank you so much. Enjoyed it, Winston. All right. Well, we'll see you Sunday morning, okay? All right, listen, folks. Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. If you get a chance, uh, take a young person out in the woods and, and uh, turkey hunting all. And as always, I ask you to do something good for your fellow man. Have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.